What is up, y'all? Welcome back to another Fish the Moment live stream. Today, I'm flying solo again without Randy. And because Randy's over at Lake Dardanelle doing some fishing, and I basically didn't have anything to talk about, I wanted to do a throwback to my old style of live streams. When I first started live streaming on Fish the Moment about three or four years ago, all I would do was break down lakes for the people who watch my stream. There would be like 20 guys on the stream, and I would just help them break down their lakes, look at lakes, stuff like that. And so I wanted to kind of do this one time just as a throwback to the past. I'm not going to make this a regular thing. We have lake breakdowns and everything available over on fishthemoment.com. But just as a thanks to you guys for recently reaching 100,000 subscribers, I wanted to break down a few lakes and kind of do a throwback to the old style. So hopefully you guys can all hear me tonight. We had some audio issues at the beginning of the last live stream. So hopefully we are good to go. I'm not seeing anything going crazy in the comments. So uh, let's just see who, who all is in here tonight. We got uh, Ryan, Anthony, Chad, Hugo, Gary, Terry, Ron, Joel, Guy B, everyone, basically, <laughs> when you guys saw that we were doing lake breakdowns, you're like, come on, let's go, we're going into it, so uh, pretty excited about that, and uh, what I'm going to be doing, guys, I'm going to start breaking down Falls Lake in North Carolina here, just because that's a popular lake um, that a lot of guys ask about, and I've actually fished there before for a bass camp I did one time, and I want to break it down, show you kind of how I break down a lake, the process I go through, and then I'm actually going to have someone on my team going through the live stream chat. So if you're on the live stream, live during the stream, put your lake suggestion in there, and we will try to uh, go through as many as we can. We're going to tally up the most popular. So even if someone's already set a lake, Put it in there again because we're going to take the ones that are recommended the most often. That just seems like the best way to do it. Uh, again, this is just a one-off thing, so uh, don't send me a bunch of emails saying that you want me to break down more lakes on the stream. Uh, we're going to be back to normal business once Randy returns from his tournament on Lake Dardanelle. So anyways, let's jump right into it. Waste no more time. Let's start breaking down some post-spawn spots on Falls Lake in North Carolina. Okay, so let's see here. Uh, and by the way, if you used to watch the live stream a long time ago, like three or four years ago, leave a comment. Let me know who are the old school guys. If you remember me doing this type of live stream, you were definitely an old school Fish the Moment fan. I was wearing flat bill caps at the time. It was all, it was a whole thing. Okay, so uh, Falls Lake here. First thing I do whenever I look at a lake before I do anything is I need to figure out a couple of factors. One, what is the weather going to be like going forward and what is the water level. So I actually pulled that stuff up. You can basically just type in like Falls Lake or wherever the town is around here to get the weather. You guys know how to search the weather. So, oh, there's an ad for something. Uh, so got the weather here. If we take a look over in North Carolina, kind of around this Raleigh area, it's going to be 85 degrees Wednesday, and then it's going to be 60 to 70 degrees. Really, like most of the temperature is going to be in the high you know, 60s and the 70s, and it's going to progress into the 80s as we go into the middle of May here. Now, I'm going to kind of break this down just in general of what I would do in the post-spawn. And as we can see, there's not going to be any major cold fronts, major drops, except for the next couple days. But after that, it's going to kind of rebound. So you're looking probably at water temperatures I would expect right now around the 65 to 70 degree range, kind of the heart of the post-spawn. So that, you know, temperature kind of gives me a decent gauge of what's going on. It might not be perfect, but I'm just going to estimate based on this, water temperature is going to be 65 to 70 degrees. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the lake level. You can just pull up a website, just type in Falls Lake water level, and it'll pull up this website. This is like the U.S. Lakes info. I don't know who makes this site, but I find that it lines up with a lot of other sites. So you can actually look at this lake over time, see what the standard water level is. And if we take a look at it right now, uh, basically back in uh, February, we'll take out the other years because it's kind of confusing. So this is uh, 2021. So in February, it was really hot. You lake was 10 feet high. Um, now it's dropped down a lot. They pulled that water down. And the guys over Major League Fishing were actually just fishing over on these lakes. So you may have seen them catching some fish over there. And then as we kind of go through here, you can see the water level has been very stable. We don't expect a bunch of rain. Um, it looks like in the forecast there's just a little bit of rain, nothing crazy. So I would expect the water level to stay consistent. So that means that if we look at a map, look at Navionics, things like that, we don't have to worry about adjusting for crazy high water levels. We can just go based on the standard deal. Awesome. So now that takes us to the actual lake itself. Now a lot of guys 
basically think you need to just jump in here and just start looking at spots on a map. Okay, here's a ledge, or here's your creek channel, here's a pocket where the creek channel swings in, there's a little bit of a steeper bank. And a lot of guys think I just go through and start looking at spots. That is not at all what I do. Um, When I go to a lake, guys, I don't necessarily break down the lake in terms of specific spots, especially when I'm going there to fish um, during a day. I, I like to get a big picture of what the lake is doing before I ever start trying to dial it in. And I rarely ever anymore actually go in and like, look for specific spots and things like that before I go out. I'll do a little bit of that tonight just for you guys, but really what I like to do first is take a higher level view of what's going on. To do that, I'm gonna use Google Earth. Google Earth is by far one of the best tools for trying to figure out what's going on in the lake. And what I like to do, and I made a video about this just this past like four or five days ago, uh, where you can actually take this lake, you can click uh, one of these buttons, you can go back in time. I don't have the menu up here, but you can watch my recent video about how you can actually look at old historical images of this lake. And if I've never been to the lake before, one thing I like to do a lot is basically take the lake back in time and see what the water clarity is doing over a long period of time. So uh, if we kind of just keep going back, you get some pictures that are good, some pictures that are bad. So here's a picture from April 2016. Might be a decent comparable. If we take a look at the lake, you can kind of see that the water has this somewhat of like a darker green tint to it. This color to me, just based on experience, is probably anywhere from about two, two and a half, maybe three foot of water visibility down here on the lower end. And as you come up into some of these pockets and coves, it gets brighter green. That's usually going to mean there's more stain to the water. So I'm expecting there to be a foot, foot and a half visibility, maybe even less six inches of visibility back in here. Looks like as you come up to this area, you get that brighter green water. So you're dealing with maybe a foot of visibility up in this area. You're dealing with maybe two foot of visibility on the main lake. And then maybe down here, you might be having two and a half to three foot of visibility down here at the bottom. That's very um, in line with what I saw the last time I was around the lake. Um, I do want to look at this at a couple different times of the year because you don't want to, for example, look at it um, right here in February of 2018 and see, man, it's like super muddy in here. You can see how bright green that is, or it's super clear down here. A lot of times in the spring, you have very drastic changes where it's really muddy, really clear. So I like to kind of take a sampling of everything, take a look at a bunch of different times to see what the lake is doing. But it looks like in general, we were looking pretty good in that 2016 image. So I'm gonna kind of pull that back up. and so, actually, where'd that go? I need to find the 26, I'm going to pull up that 2016 image and kind of take a look around. So now that I kind of know what the water visibility is doing on this lake, and I have a general sense of water visibility, next thing I need to figure out is what do the fish actually want to do in this time of the year? So knowing that we're in post-spawn, really what you'll find on any lake is that you're going to have fish that are spawning in the backs of coves, in the backs of pockets, And they spawn here in April, Um, depending on where you are in the country, they spawn different times. But let's say when water temperature is 60 degrees, they'll be spawning in the backs of these pockets. And then as the summer progresses, they're going to start moving further out into the main lake. And this is called the post-spawn period, basically where they go from where they were spawning in the pockets back out to where they're going to set up in the summertime. This usually happens when the water temperature is between about 65 and 70 degrees, maybe 72 degrees. So we know that the water temperature is going to be where it's at, 70 uh, degrees, somewhere in there, 65 to 70 degrees. So these fish are going to be making a move out of here. Now, for me personally, I like to fish offshore. So I'm going to try to find some places where I feel like I can catch offshore bass. But I'm also going to give you guys some suggestions on some shallow water fish as well, because I feel like there's going to be a mix of both. So in general, what I like to find is that if I'm fishing for offshore fish in the post-spawn, I want to fish for the bass that are going to be offshore first. What I mean by that is it's the fish that spawned the first and then moved out into deeper water right after they got done spawning. This usually happens when you have dirtier water visibility. Water visibility up in this part of the lake where you might have a foot, foot and a half, maybe two feet of water visibility. The more stained the water, the faster that water will warm up and that means that the fish are going to be setting up offshore a little bit sooner. On the flip side, if we go down to the bottom of the lake here towards the dam, you can see the water is clear. 
This means the water is going to warm up slower, these bass are going to spawn later, and they're going to pull offshore a little bit later in the year. They're not going to be offshore as uh, soon as the bass on the dirtier end of the lake. So for me personally, if I was going to go to this lake and try to catch fish, I would be finding areas in this dirty water section of the lake. Now, I don't know exactly what the water vis visibility is going to be like when I get there. It could be two foot of visibility here. It could be six inches. It kind of is tough to tell. But what I would kind of do is try to figure out, let's say in this general zone of the lake, this is where I would kind of set myself up and say, okay, I want to find some areas in this zone of the lake where I have, let's say, a foot and a half to two foot of visibility. That seems like enough water visibility where I can still fish offshore, but it's dirty enough that those fish have already spawned and are going to be moving more towards the main lake areas. So what I'll do then is now that I know kind of this is where I'm going to fish, if I was fishing on the lake, um, if I was going to the lake myself, this is where I would stop. I would just kind of, I do this research before I go, and then I just kind of say, okay, this is the, the area of the lake I'm going to fish, and I just let things unfold as I go to the lake. That's not that fun, though, so I'm going to start showing you guys a few spots here, because I know that's what you guys are here for. So what I'll do is pull up Navionics then, and I will just say, okay, we're going to basically pick this section of Falls Lake to check out for the offshore areas. I'm going to check it out right here. So what I'll do is I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to try to see what type of structure is available. What type of structure do we have? Because that's what I'm trying to do. Offshore fishing, I want some structure. So what I would do is I would probably just start out by trying to find a creek channel, if there's a creek channel available. This isn't going to happen on all the lakes. We're hopefully going to have some different lakes tonight so I can show you the differences and how I break these different lakes down. But on a lake like a Falls Lake, you have a very defined creek channel. You can see it running through the lake right here. If you do have questions about what a creek channel is, I've made videos on my main YouTube channel over at Fish the Moment where I explain how to interpret a contour map. You can check that all out. There's any video you want to know about how to break down a lake, it's available over on Fish the Moment, the main YouTube page. This is Fish the Moment Live. You guys know this. If you're here, you probably know the main Fish the Moment channel. So what I'm going to try to find is areas where this creek channel is running through. But I don't just want any areas where there's a creek channel. For example, I'm not going to be fishing out here in the middle of the lake out here where there's a creek channel setting up. This may be a spot that's good in certain times of the year. However, because the fish just got done spawning, I need to find an area where the creek channel, this main creek channel or maybe like a secondary creek channel right here, is setting up a little bit closer to a pocket or a cove. So we have a pocket or a cove right here. It's going like this. So this is kind of what's happening. You can see there's a channel right there and it's leading out of a pocket or a cove. So I'm going to try to find some areas and a couple of areas that kind of just pop off the map right here is right in this area. This area right here pops off the map to me. Why is that? Well, basically what you have is you have a creek channel that's swinging in front of a series of spawning pockets right here. This is where a lot of bass are going to spawn. And then you have a creek channel right here. This is where the bass want to go in the summer. And there's a very short distance between these pockets right here and then the creek channel right here. So where I would be looking, and if I was going to fish, I would be graphing, looking for offshore areas. I would be graphing the shallower areas closer to deep water where basically you have a sharp drop off from shallower to deeper water. Knowing my experience on Falls Lake, last time I was there, I caught a lot of fish offshore, five to eight feet of water. So I would expect that like maybe this little hump right here could be really good. This point that sticks out, maybe there's some brush piles or something people have planted in this little ditch that runs right here. Um, but basically this right here could be really good. There's another little ditch that runs right here. There may be some brush or some shells or something on this point right there. I wouldn't be going all the way out to this main channel. This is where I was catching a lot of fish when I went to Falls Lake in like July, August, September time of the year. The main channel where you have drop-offs dropping into the channel. Instead, I want stuff that's a little bit more in between, a little bit shallower, because those fish haven't committed all the way offshore yet. So that's a good, good looking area. Another area that looks pretty good. Again, you have some spawning pockets right here, creek channel running through. So maybe this drop-off right here where you have a kind of a gradual sloping bank dropping straight in the channel. This looks really good to me. Um, this point right here looks really good to me if I was doing some offshore fishing, immediate post-spawn. Same thing, the edge of this flat right here looks really good. Drops in the channel, but it's really close to a spawning area, maybe this point right here. So I have a bunch of different areas in this, er this section that I would want to check out. 
There's even more stuff over here where you have this island. There maybe is some brush or something out in front of this island. There's a bunch of stuff out here to check out. I would then be graphing it, trying to figure out what's happening, and maybe trying to find some fish offshore. So that would be my approach for finding some offshore fish on Falls Lake. Now, if I was wanting to fish up shallow, I would take a little bit different approach. Instead of trying to catch those fish up in the dirty water where I'm looking at for the offshore areas, I would want to try to find those fish that are just getting off the beds post-spawn. Because if I'm fishing up shallow in the post-spawn, I want those bass that just got off the beds that are really hungry and are feeding on maybe a shad spawn in the morning, maybe some bluegill they're moving in. And in that case, I want to be heading more down towards the dam, the lower end of the lake. This is where the bass spawn later. They're not going to be spawn. Uh, they're not going to spawn as soon down by the dam because that water is clear. What I'll be looking for are areas where I feel like those bass spawned last. And for me, that's going to be kind of the first third of these creeks and maybe some of these pockets on the main lake. These pockets on the main lake are going to, this is going to warm up the, the latest. These are the last places they're going to warm up on the lake, and it'll be the last places those bass spawn. So what I'm looking for are areas where you have something interesting in these pockets right off the main lake, and maybe where you have some sort of cover on the points or the bends leading in and out of these little pockets. What I'm specifically looking for are maybe some laydowns, um, some interesting rock areas, and I'm not really seeing a ton of laydowns really in this area, so I'm not super ecstatic about this. I'm going to kind of just scroll around here, look for some a section down here where there's a little bit more like interesting rock, interesting laydowns going on. And while I'm doing this, I may even speed up the time on the clock to kind of see if there's something that pops from a different time of the year. And boom, here, this really pops. Look at this bank right here. It's leading into a spawning pocket right here. There's some really nice chunk rock banks that are right there. There's also some nice laydowns. These are the perfect place for some of these fish to get right after the post spawn, or right after they spawn in that post spawn period. They'll set up on some of these isolated laydowns to stick off the bank, uh, maybe some of these rocky transitions. And I'll be fishing these spots with a bait like a fluke, maybe a big swim bait, stuff like that. And I'm going to be just rolling through these areas like crazy, um, trying to find some of these fish that are in that post spawn mood. I know on falls, a, like a mag draft swim bait could be really, really good on some of those... Um, uh, some of those laydowns, I could see throwing a wacky rig worm, throwing a fluke. There's a bunch of stuff you could throw um, on these areas that could be really, really productive. So that's kind of what I would be looking for. And I would kind of try to run that pattern up and down the southern portion towards the dam on this lake. And just to kind of verify, I'll also pull up Navionics. I don't need Navionics that much when I'm fishing up shallow, but I will just check to make sure that these banks have something interesting. Like, for example, right here, yep, there's a creek channel that runs right against it. That's kind of interesting. I'm not going to be as bothered with Navionics when I'm fishing up shallow, though I will pay attention to it more in, like, the spring. But in post-spawn, I might pay attention to where the creek channel's swinging in, but I'm more focused on maybe areas where the wind's blowing in, where you have some laydowns, and I'll be focusing on the lower end of the lake. So that's what I'd be doing on Falls Lake. Obviously, there's a lot of other things you could be doing. That's just what I would be doing. But that's kind of what I would go in with a game plan. Now, one thing to call out is that when I'm doing this, I'm not just going to make this game plan and stick with it. I very, very rarely go to the lake, find this section of the lake, and say, I'm going to fish offshore, and I catch him doing that. What I might find is when I get to the lake, the lake might be five degrees colder than I think it is. Maybe the water temperatures are 60 degrees still. Well, in that case, if I'm up here on this part of the lake, those fish still might be spawning. And I might need to pop into the back of a spawning pocket and start swimming a jig or throwing something different. Or I might find the water is a lot, lot warmer. It's 75 degrees already. Well, that means those fish might actually be already off of this stuff and more on these main channel areas. Or on the lower end, I might be thinking I need to be catching them on these uh, shallower laydowns and stuff and those fish could already be offshore and I might be catching them off of some of these shallower points um, some offshore areas things like that so I'm always adjusting always adapting that's why I don't always recommend just going to the lake and saying I'm going to do one thing we're going I always recommend that you keep an open mind you fish the moment that's why I named the channel that you got to fish the moment pay attention to all the different signs pay attention to your weather pay attention to your lake level and you're going to have a lot more success so that is um, that is kind of the deal on Falls Lake. So 
Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed that breakdown. I now have a couple more lakes that we're going to break down. So let me pull up. I'm just getting texts from my team. So let me see what lakes are good uh, to break down here. Let's see here. Okay. So lake, one popular lake here is apparently Truman Lake, Missouri for the high school national championship or the high school championship. That's close to home. That's, that's a term that's close to home because I used to fish in the high school fishing world finals, national championship, whatever you want to call it. I don't know why they call it world finals. There was like two schools from international, but whatever. But in that tournament, there were like 200 boats every year. And I finished in the top 10 every single year, that high school championship. And that was really awesome and I was fishing against like basically all the the dads would take the kids out and I was the only one who was like finding the fish by myself so I felt pretty good I think I had a second a or maybe a, I think a second a fifth a seventh and a tenth or something out of 200 boats all four years of high school so pretty solid performance for me I'm uh have fond memories of that so we're gonna pull up uh Truman Lake over here in Missouri and it's a little bit close to home. I've never fished there before, but I uh, got Truman Reservoir up here. So we'll take just a quick peek at Truman. Uh, I've looked at this lake actually once before, so that's going to be very helpful. And this will be lake number one. So uh, let me just kind of pull this all up. Hopefully you guys are bearing with me while I scroll around here. Uh, sorry, it takes a second to find all this. There's Cumberland. Okay, here we go. And Truman Lake. There we go. Okay. Got Google Earth pulled up. Truman Lake. There we go. So this is in Missouri, uh, kind of by Lake of the Ozarks in general. So if we take a look at some factors, first thing I'm going to do, guys, is I'm going to pull up the weather for Truman Lake. So I'm just going to pull up uh, Truman Lake, Missouri weather. Let's see here. Just give me... Bear with me for one second, guys. Got to find a town. I don't even know. that. This is the thing doing these live. I'm just kind of just rolling. Ooh, Racket, Missouri. Okay, that's that's a town. If you live in Racket, I'm not throwing shade at your town. That's just an interesting name. Okay, got Racket, Missouri pulled up. And then we're going to pull up Truman Lake level. And there we go. Okay, perfect. So let me start pulling this up over here. So got Truman Lake water level, and we also have um, our temperatures over here. Oh, this is for Florida. That's not what I searched. Racket, Missouri. There we go. Weather.com. Always, always giving me issues. Okay, now we're in Warsaw, Missouri. Whatever, we're, we're close enough. Okay, so if we take a look at the weather, it's pretty close to home here, so uh, kind of have a general sense. It's just kind of been mucky, kind of crummy, but water temperatures around here are like 63 to 70 degrees, so similar to North Carolina. Kind of a typical deal post-spawn, middle of a post-spawn, so another good example of this. If we take a look at this lake, you can see, um, you know, or that this... Um, weather conditions. We've had a lot of rain here recently, which is going to raise the water levels up a little bit, probably. Um, there's going to be more rain kind of scattered throughout. We're kind of getting our uh, April showers in May this year. So um, that is kind of happening. So let's pull up Truman Lake. So if we take a look here, you can see from Truman, it was really high and it's kind of back to normal. So we're kind of similar idea to um, what we're dealing with on Falls Lake which is pretty interesting. So similar deal is kind of falling back to normal pool. So those fish should be kind of getting into their post-spawn, solid post-spawn uh, patterns. Now, if we pull up Truman Lake on Google Earth and Navionics, what we'll find is, I know from personal experience, just breaking down Truman, is a stumpy minefield of uh, trees and um, everything. There's just a ton of different stuff going on. Uh, so if we take a look, at this lake, just kind of zooming in, you can see there's basically standing timber everywhere. And if you guys have standing timber in your lake, especially like those guys down in Texas, you guys know you have a ton of standing timber, a bunch of trees, stuff like that. There's out here in the middle of nowhere. So that's going to be a complicating factor in this because basically one navigation is going to be tough. But in addition to that, there's going to be standing timber everywhere. So there's going to be no shortage of cover 
And whenever you're on a lake where there's just standing timber everywhere, there's cover everywhere, it's going to cause those fish to spread out a little bit more. They're not going to be as congregated in one spot. There are times when they'll group up, especially in the summertime, but in a lot of situations, they're going to be a little bit more spread out, and you're not going to find them just like grouped up on one particular area. Now, on a lake like Truman, you have a very similar situation to what you had at Falls. You have clear water down by the dam. You have dirtier water up both the arms of the river, and you have a clear water arm down this way. So you have clear water, you got some dirtier water, more dirty water, and then clear water. So you kind of have a mix of everything. In this situation, on a Truman Lake, the first thing I would be doing is I would be trying to figure out what the primary species is on this lake. And I know on Falls Lake, it's going to be largemouth, that's the deal. Truman, I would expect there would also be primary largemouth. And if there were smallmouth in this lake, if there were spotted bass, I would treat this lake very different because the way I would fish in the post-spawn, I would probably be focusing on trying to catch some of those smallmouth bass and then mixing in some largemouth. But knowing this lake is primarily a largemouth fishery, that's what I'm going to be focused on. Now, when I'm trying to fish on a lake that's full of standing timber, stuff like that, I'm not going to get as focused offshore until later in the year. I'm not going to try to get that offshore bite going probably until June or July. In May, it's a little bit sketchy. You're not going to catch nearly as many fish uh, grouped up because of all the standing timber. So instead, what I want to be looking for most likely on a Truman Lake over the next two, three weeks is a strong shad spawn in the morning. So I want some shad spawning in the morning, and then I want to find some shallow points where I can catch some fish, maybe fish in a medium dive and crankbait, square bill crankbait, and maybe just like that stuff that's just off the bank, not like right on the bank, but just offshore. So that's kind of what I would be looking for on a Truman Lake, just given the way it's set up and the fact that there's so much standing timber. So what I would do is I would try to find an area on this lake where there's a little bit of water visibility. I don't want like chocolate milk. Like up here you have a foot and a half, like a foot to a foot and a half visibility, very, very stained up. So I wouldn't really want to mess with that. I am going to go back in time just a little bit to see if that's the norm or if it clears up in the summer. These are all taken in December. What's with Google are taking pictures of this like only in December? Are you serious? I'm serious. Every single picture is like got taken in December. Oh man. Okay. Well, that's not helpful. I would expect, because the lake just got drawn down a lot, I would expect the water's probably clearing up a little bit. So let's just say that like in this zone, like right here, I would expect there's probably about foot and a half, two, two and a half, like foot and a half to two and a half foot of visibility. You have some clear water in this area and then you have a little bit clear, maybe three to four foot of visibility here. And then you have another like one to two foot of visibility in this area. So for me, if I'm going to try to catch fish, shad spawn, catch fish a little bit more off uh, off the shore, I want to find an area where I can quickly go from clear water up to dirtier water very fast. And this is the area of the lake that stands out to me. In the mornings, I can check out the shad spawn, a little bit clear water. And then in the afternoons, I'm going to be trying to catch some fish a little bit more into the stained water and make my way up into the stained water Obviously, depending on where it is, it could start here, it could start here. It just kind of depends on when we're at. So uh, what we want to do is if you go to um, this part of the lake, if I was going to start out, let's say, in the morning on a Truman in the post spawn, I would be looking for a shad spawn heavy. Shad spawn is basically where the bass or the shad pull up first hour of the morning and they start laying their eggs. And that's, I know, Randy's least favorite topic. Randy would be like, what are you doing looking at the shad spawn? But, you know, Randy... Randy's a little bit old school. I got the new school strategies going for you guys. Not to throw shade on Randy. Just a, well, just a tiny bit. Uh, so uh, first thing I'll be doing, I love fishing marinas whenever you have a shad spawn going on. So I would be checking the backs of these marinas here, and I'd be skipping a white swim jig or a white chatterbait, checking to see if there's any shad spawn going on under marina docks. That's just a really solid pattern. Anywhere in the country, there's a shad spawn happening. So I'd be checking this marina right here. Um, I saw another marina here. Perfect. I got a couple marinas to check out, and I would be spending my first hour of the morning just running these marinas really fast, skipping a swim jig underneath them, seeing if I can get a couple easy fish on the shad spawn. Once that kind of dies off, I might still try to do a little more shad spawn around maybe doesn't really look like there's any riprap. Maybe like on the riprap around this side, maybe do a little bit of riprap fishing around those bridges. So that would be kind of like the first hour, hour and a half of my day. 
The next thing I would be doing on a lake like Truman is I would try to find some fish that are transitioning out of these pockets and are setting up on long, flat, tapering points like this point out here. Now, on these areas, there's going to be a ton of standing timber and trees and stuff like that. So I'm not necessarily going to be looking for a school of fish with my electronics, anything like that. Uh, basically, what I'm going to do is just pick up a bait that I can cover water with out on these long, narrow points. So if we take a look at Navionics, what I'm going to pull over here is going to show you some... Actually, before we do that, before we show you all the stuff on Navionics, give away all the juice... One thing I want to call out really quick because we do have to pay the bills around here. You guys know how it is. Um, so let me pull this up over here. So we're going to pay the bills. Um, and I want to show you guys one thing really fast. Is some stuff over here on fishthemoment.com. So uh, as you guys know... Um, the way we support ourselves over here at Fish the Moment for the live stream, for everything, is on our website, fishthemoment.com. If you head to the website, head to the virtual seminars page, you can check out a couple upcoming seminars that we'll be doing. The first one is going to be our seasonal bass movement seminar. In this seminar, I explain how to follow bass around a lake in all seasons of the year, and we're going to be talking about how the thermocline, water level, water temperature, the shad migration, bait fish migration, bluegill, all this stuff, how it affects bass movement across the lake, why the bass are in the backs of the creek sometimes the year, why they're on the main lake other parts of the year, how you can dial it in. A lot of the information I'm using during this live stream, guys, about how I determine where to go fish on all these lakes is uh, basically the information that's going to be in the seminar. I'm going to be giving you everything you need to know about how to dial in where the bass are in each season of the year, and how to follow them. This is going to be specific for man-made lakes with shad or herring. That's just because it's different for natural lakes, it's different for everything. So definitely, this is a seminar for those who are on like a lake like a Lake Truman or a Raleigh Lakes like Falls Lake we talked about earlier. The seasonal bass move and how they move in and out. So great seminar. I did, did this a while ago and it filled up really fast. So definitely sign up uh, now if you want to get uh, a spot because it completely filled up last time way before the seminar uh, was going to happen. So um, definitely check that one out. Another one we're doing uh, later on in May. This one's going to be May 13th, the seasonal bass movement. So in like 10 days. And then May 27th, Randy and I are going to do an advanced summer jig fishing seminar where we talk about how to catch fish both offshore and shallow on jigs. We got uh, football jig fishing with myself, how to catch them on a big three quarter on swim jig and like brush piles and stuff hair jig fishing i'm gonna talk about all that randy's gonna be talking about flipping a jig up shallow um doing a bunch of other shallow water stuff so we're gonna be talking about that and that's gonna be a great seminar for anyone who struggles to catch fish in a jig and who just wants to catch bigger fish on a jig in the summer uh last but not least just really quick here guys we'll get back to the maps i promise is check out our lake breakdowns if you guys do want one of your lakes broken down this is the best way to do it we uh, basically provide you with 40 GPS waypoints with detailed descriptions of the areas, when to fish, all the conditions. And it's basically what I'm doing here in this breakdown, except for it's way more uh, specific, gives you summaries of the lake, gives you exact spots to fish, gives you conditions so you're not fishing spots when it's not the right time. We give you everything you need to know, and these are available on the website spring, summer, fall. We actually are adding summer breakdowns, so if you haven't seen those, definitely check those out. So that is it, guys. We have uh, hopefully paid the bills. I don't know if we have, but um, hopefully you guys are going to check those out. We'll be able to pay the bills and keep it rolling. So back over to Navionics here. Let me uh, pull this all back up. Man, it's weird rolling solo back on these live streams. I used to, I'm used to having Randy here. I can do all my manipulation of the screens in the background. Randy can talk. So, um, yeah, that's going to be <laughs> uh, going to be a good deal But uh, when he comes back. But for now, we're just going to keep rolling. So back to Truman Lake. Um, by the way, for those who are wondering if the next lake is going to be here in a second, we're going to actually go up north. I'm going to be talking about a natural lake up north. So if you guys have been wanting some northern lakes and natural lakes, that's where we're headed next. So uh, stay tuned. Strap yourself in. So, okay. So basically, uh, Truman Lake, Truman Reservoir, I was talking about how I wanted to fish in this midsection of the lake. And I was saying how I wanted to kind of find some of these long tapering points in the mouths of these pockets where these fish are moving out. So if we pull up. Navionics again. What I would be really focused on is, uh, oh, I wasn't showing that. One second here. Let me pull this back up. There we go. So we're looking for these long 
points, long narrow points in these pockets. Sorry, go back to bad habits of not transitioning my screen because Randy's not here. Okay, now we got Navionics. There we go. So if we go to the section of the lake, really what I'm looking for on Navionics is areas where you can see that there's a long narrow point it sticks out super far and it's like a foot or two of water up on top maybe not that drastic that's a pretty aggressive one but even an area like this where you have a pocket and you have this very flat area right here and then it drops off sharper in this channel this area up here is basically just gonna be a flat nothing looking point if we pull it up on google earth you can get a sense of what this looks like when the lake is a little bit uh, lower so this is when the lake is a little bit down normally i, I would assume this is a normal pool probably underwater um yeah a normal pool it's normally like underwater like that but in these images it's actually just out of the water but this is kind of what it looks like under the water right here it's these long tapering points and up on top of there there's going to be some trees but there's also going to be just kind of gaps in the trees and what i'm going to be focused on is finding these areas that have shad pushed up on them i want some sort of shad activity on Truman, there's going to be some gizzard shad activity, and they're probably going to be positioned up here in a foot to maybe out to six, seven feet of water. And my go-to bait in this situation, I'm going to be taking like a medium diving crankbait or like a big square bill, like a 2.5 square bill crankbait, something that will bounce off of these trees really well. And I'm just going to burn water. I'm going to cover water around, running around these points like this, uh, running down these edges, down these points. And what you'll find is that there's going to be certain points that have more fish on them than others. Usually that's going to come down to having something different on the point. Like right here you can see there's a little bit of rock on this point right there. That little piece of rock might position those fish in... Whoa, that's not what I wanted. Uh, position those fish like in this stretch down these trees. And you're basically going to find that they're in like this little zone right here. And you can go back and forth, back and forth down that stretch. And I'll start with throwing a um, square bill crankbait, like a 2.5 square bill crankbait, a pretty big one. Maybe even like a striking 4.0, like a bigger square bill. Uh, maybe throwing a big spinner bait if you like that sort of thing. I'm not a spinner bait guy. Uh, maybe a big swim bait if the water's clear enough. And then if I come through here one time and get two, three bites, I'm going to spin back around and in the post spawn, one of my favorite baits to throw is a big 10 inch worm, Zumo Monster 10 inch worm or a big brush hog. And I would then take that and I would just pitch all these trees, flip that, flip the trees down this outside point line. That would be a really good pattern for me if I can find those fish and they will be out there. I can tell you, guarantee you, you just have to get in the right area and that's the thing you'll find on a lake like this is that water visibility is going to play such a key role you might find that you don't get any bites off of these sorry um not transitioning here we go you might find that you're not going to get any bites off these points right here none of these points are going to have anything going on but then if you make your way up the lake maybe in this area of the lake the water visibility is just about right and now off of this long point out here this is where they're going to be or this long point out here this is where they're going to be uh, and it might take running all the way up to this part this is where that water maybe gets the right visibility and you're going to be fishing these long ridges or bars that stick out here or maybe these right here. Um, I'm giving you guys just a bunch of <laughs> random examples of areas that could be good. But you can see all of these are these flatter areas that drop off into the creek channel. Those bass will have spawned all up in here, and then they're going to be making their way out. Now, all of this gets thrown out the window if the lake rises up like three feet from rain. Then those fish could push up shallow. Maybe the lake drops four feet. Who knows what's going to happen? So it's kind of a crap shoot uh, with these breakdowns because you never know what the weather is exactly going to do uh, so don't you know again don't get caught up by saying okay johnny said go fish right here because that's where the fish are going to be well that's where they're going to be if the lake stays consistent stays stable has the right water visibility you know one half to three feet of visibility stuff like that but if the water comes up maybe the water will get flooded up over this island and maybe instead of catching them on the edge of this little ditch right here or off these longer points maybe you just get in there with a one ounce jig or a three quarter ounce jig and just flip all those flooded willows and bushes and stuff around this island you have to play it by ear you can't again it's fish the moment it's not fish the 
spot that is on this exact GPS map. And that's what we like to do with those breakdowns on fishmoment.com is when we give you the, the spots, we explain what conditions are conducive. We give you spots when the lake is high, when the lake is low, when the water visibility is one way or another. We try to give you a lot of options because when you get to the lake, you're never going to know exactly what the conditions are. So we give you, the reason we put 40 GPS waypoints, it's ridiculous with the map breakdowns of fishmoment.com, we give you so many, but it's because probably only five of those are going to be effective any day of the week you go to the water because something's going to be different. So you have to be able to to determine of those 40, which five are the ones that are the best that day. And we give you descriptions to help you with that. So again, if you guys are interested in getting some of those breakdowns, they're over here, fishthemoment.com. You can check out our summer breakdowns uh, coming up here. Anyway, so uh, if we go to uh, New Lake, New Lake time, uh, we had a request for a northern lake, but non-specific, so just a northern lake in general. So we are going to roll up then to a lake up here that is just going to be a great example of just a generic lake that is um, kind of like a traditional northern lake. Uh, Let's see here. Which one of these is good? Okay, we're going to pull up. Uh, let's see here, is Fox Lake a good one? I'm just trying to see if we got all the little contours and things. Um, got big green. This one is really big. Um, yeah, I know you guys are probably like, no, go to that one. No, go to that one. I'm trying to find. Uh, okay, so we got Lake Mendota over here. This is a pretty good one. We'll go to Mass and Chain. Uh, maybe Lake Monona. Um, let's see here. We'll do Mendota. Let's go to Mendota really quick. So we'll do, no, 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 no. Here we go. This is better. This lake right here. So I'm trying to find something that's not too big, not too small. Sorry, I'm. There was it was not specific, so I was trying to find something. I'm trying to find a lake that's not like super deep, super big. Uh, so we'll we'll scroll up here. Let me just give me half a second. I need to pull up Madison Chain. Actually, funny enough, I fished my first bass tournament ever on the Madison Chain of Lakes on Lake Mendota. I also filmed a TV show with Shaw Grigsby. Shaw Grigsby's one more cast, for those of you who know Shaw Grigsby is. He's a pro fisherman, great mustache, Florida guy. And we filmed a tournament uh, actually uh, fishing over here in University Bay right here on Lake Mendota. And that was me and uh, Shaw, or maybe it was over, I don't know. I was 10 years old, so I don't remember exactly where we were. But we were in one of those bays there and we were catching like crazy, striking bleeding bait tube. Back in the day, man, little Johnny. I'll make a video about that back in the day where we were doing that. But this is an example of a natural lake. I know guys are like, natural lakes, natural lakes. Um, this basically is going to cover you. If, you. if you're thinking natural lakes, what does that apply to? Let me drop a pin here. It's basically any lake where you, it's like a big bowl with grass in it. So basically every Wisconsin lake that's not a great lake, almost every lake in Minnesota that's not like a deep, clear, rocky lake with small mouth, pretty much everything up the... Uh, the bottom coast of the Great Lakes all the way up into here. Like this, all this area up in here, up to New York, this is what this breakdown is going to cover in general. Obviously, there's going to be differences in all lakes. Some some of them are deeper. Some of them are uh, shallower. Some of them have a little bit nuanced. That's just fishing. But this will give you a general idea for a breakdown of a uh, just a standard natural lake. There's a lot of lakes that look like this all across the Northeast. This is how I grew up fishing. So I'm very familiar with these type of lakes. I learned to fish on these type of lakes. I now talk a lot about Southern lakes because I live down South, but this is where I cut my teeth fishing. So if we pull up um, Google Earth here, one thing you're going to find on a lot of these natural lakes is you're going to have offshore grass. Uh, And by what that, what that's going to mean is going to be some sort of hydrilla, milfoil, something along those lines where you're going to have some sort of grass out in the middle of the lake. Very, very common. Um, I'm just going to try to find a good picture of the lake in a decent pool so we can kind of maybe see some of this grass. I saw a picture that looked okay, but I'm trying to find like a really good one. I don't know if I'll find it. Um, Okay. No, I didn't. Okay. So here we go. So we got, um, here's a decent image. So if we take a look at this lake. You can see on the edges here, you're going to have grass and these darker areas. This is all like milfoil grass, um, usually milfoil down uh, around this lake or a lot of these lakes. But you could have hydrilla, coontail, there's a bunch of different grass. And there's grass that just grows out here into the middle of the lake. And it's basically, this lake is just a giant bowl and there's some boat docks. When I'm on a lake like this, 
you're not going to have shad. I've, the last two lakes I've talked about are going to have shad, gizzard shad, threadfin shad. And this lake, you might have some golden shiner or something like that. Um, and basically, this is the deal uh, on these lakes is you're not going to have the shad. It's just going to be bluegill. So in a lake like this where you have the giant bowl and stuff like that, the key to catching fish on these lakes is you have to find where the bluegill and the perch are. Bluegill and perch are the key deal. Now, I'm not going to go into all of this, guys, because I do have a seminar I'm planning on natural lakes, but I'll go into it a little bit. Um, I, I have like crazy amounts of info on this sort, these sort of lakes. I just can't fish them, so I never talk about them. And no one, very few of my audience are actually from up north, so I don't really, like like 10% of people are from up north, it seems like. So uh, I don't talk about these as much. But just in general, whenever you're fishing on a lake, up north, you can break it down into one of three things. You basically have an area where you have the outside grass line. So you're going to have an area where the grass is like here and it ends. So you have outside grass line. You have the flat where it's just the big open area. And then you have the inside grass line. And the inside grass line sometimes happens, sometimes it doesn't, but it'll be the area where the grass starts to thin out closer to the bank. So you have this big flat area, outside grass line, inside grass line. Um, so that is kind of the deal. And so if you scroll in to in any area, you can kind of see a subtle outline of this grass. And this is where a lot of these bass set up year round. They don't actually live on these northern lakes all the time on the docks or up shallow like you would think bank fishing. A lot of them live out in the middle of the lake like out here. So what I would try to do if I was going to a lake like this in this time of the year. So right now we're not actually post-spawn. We're actually like pre-spawn uh, still, maybe just getting into the spawn. Maybe, I don't know, probably not post-spawn, but fishing season opens up in like three days in Wisconsin. So you guys haven't been able to fish if you wanted to. Um, so uh, if we pull up, um, uh, is it, I think it's, well, 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 best, I used to know how to say this. I don't know how to say this anymore. Uh, whatever, that lake, this lake right here. Uh, if we take a look, there's a couple different areas that are kind of intriguing to me. If we look in this general area right here, uh, you have a flat area that's very flat, shallow, and then it sticks out and there's basically just this gradual slope. And all of a sudden there's a big hump out here that drops out into deeper water. So what you'll find is that in the pre-spawn time of the year, these bass have been out here kind of on the edge of these flats out here in the middle. If you guys ice fish in Wisconsin, you'll know the perch kind of get out here. They're going to be perch. There's going to be some bluegill. And the bass will kind of be up on the edge of these flats kind of out here more out towards the middle um, around some of these little ditches and turns and stuff like that. And that's where if you ever go to a lake, that's where you're going to find like on these humps and stuff out here, shallower water areas out in the middle or just on these bigger flats like out in here. That's where all those guys are drilling their ice fishing holes and you're putting up your shanties. And now people are like, what are you talking about? That was me back in the day, ice fishing Johnny. That's how I got my start um, through the ice. That's That was how I did my offshore fishing back in the day. I didn't have a boat. So the only way I offshore fish was through the ice. That's the original, that's the origin of offshore bass fishing, ice fishing. You heard it first here. So anyways, um, that's where you're going to find a lot of your fish. And what happens is that those perch basically are setting up more towards this deeper water area and they're moving in to start feeding up, um, getting ready for their spawn. Now, the thing that's different about bass fishing up north versus bass fishing down south is that down south you're dealing with shad. So on a lake like Truman, those shad move in and out of creeks and they kind of follow the same schedule as the bass in terms of the bass will spawn in 60 degree water in April the shad will spawn 65 degree water temperatures like a couple weeks after kind of in similar areas to the bass the bass are kind of in line with each other with the shad and the bass on these northern lakes though the shad or the uh, shad are non-existent so you basically have bluegill and perch and they kind of detach themselves from the bass a little bit what happens is that those perch are out here kind of further out here feeding up getting ready for their spawn which actually happens during the summertime it doesn't happen during the spring. They spawn in the summer. And so what will happen is these bass, they will make their move basically from these areas out here that are up in these shallow flats, and they'll spawn a lot of times 
not up on the bank. There will be some bass on the bank. There'll be some perch on the bank, but a lot of them will spawn kind of out here more towards the middle of these areas on these shallow flats out here because those perch are still out here more towards the middle of the lake. They might be, you know, bass might spawn out in this little flat here because those perch are more towards the edge. And so they can't, they don't want to travel from way out here in the pre-spawn a hundred yards away from the food to spawn then have to refine the food. They'll stay a little bit more towards the main part of the lake so they'll spawn and they'll live just more offshore in general. They'll also group up a lot more. So if I was going out here in the pre-spawn on a lake like this, I would be looking for areas where you have these humps out in the middle. Um, they're somewhat connected to the bank or I would be looking for maybe like these shallow uh, like little flats like this, drop on, dropping off into deeper water, and I'll be looking for areas where those perch are grouped up. Now those perch are gonna group up usually on some sort of hard bottom area. I'm not gonna get into all of this here because this is kind of, I'm burning my seminar. So I gotta save this, some of this, but there's a whole thing of how they move in and out. With natural lakes, you gotta worry about smallmouth versus largemouth, herring moving in. There's so much going on to it. There's a lot of info to go through. Um, certain little sneaky deals I talk about um, but I can't give it all up here, guys. Uh, but this is kind of just a general overview of what I'd be looking for. I'd be kind of trying to find areas out in here, um, trying to find some fish you're grouped up in the grass. One thing I will say is when you're out here um, on these sort of natural lakes, you're not going to find fish grouped up everywhere. Um, they're going to be grouped up in small little areas. So you're going to find an area of fish that might be, they might be like right there and that's it. That's the only place you're going to get bit. They group up in small little groups, small sections. And that's just because that's where the bait fish are. They group up in smaller sections, smaller groupings. There's little ways you can identify those key stretches and stuff like that. But that is uh, for a different seminar. Um, and we'll do that sometime this summer, guys. Because I'm actually going to go up to Wisconsin, visit family. So uh, maybe I'll sneak out in the lake, get some sonar recordings. Who knows what will happen. Um, but anyways, so that is it. Cool. Um so that is the deal here. So we got time. I need to keep rolling because I am running behind. I want to get four lakes in. So next lake, let's see here. Okay. Next lake that got requested a lot. Let's see here. And team, if you could send me another lake list. I'm, I've burned all these lakes. So I need one more lake, team. Um, thank you. Uh, so last next one is... Toledo Bend. That is a big lake. Toledo Bend down in Texas. I'm not going to break down Toledo Bend. That's too big. Um, let me let me just scroll through here. That's that's too much for for a breakdown. There's like a million things. Uh, give me some lakes, guys. Uh, Wheeler Lake. Okay, we got. I see Wheeler Lake here. Wheeler Lake is uh, in Alabama. Just popped up. So we'll just go over to Wheeler Lake. That's a good kind of mix. You get a Tennessee River Lake. We're getting northern lakes. We got lakes on the East Coast. Man, we are we are diverse. Uh, let me see if I can find Wheeler Lake. You guys are going to watch me struggle to find uh, lakes here. That I am not even close. Um, okay, let's see here. So we got uh, Gunnersville. Uh, no, that's not even Gunnersville. Where am I looking? Here we go. There's Gunnersville. Okay. Do I know my lakes? So we got Wheeler Lake, Wilson, and then Pickwick. So this is Wheeler Lake. Okay, I'm good. I, I, I kind of got it. I was I was probably looking at like Douglas Lake or, or Cumberland. I was looking at something else. But anyways, it's kind of hard with the Google Earth. Cut me some slack, guys. Um, I mean, I used to be better at this. I used to do this on live streams all the time. So I was just snapping between lakes. I knew where every lake in the country was in like five seconds. So um, <laughs> doing my best. So, uh, okay, we got uh, Wheeler Lake here. How would I fish this in the post spawn? So actually, Randy was just over here on Pickwick Lake the other day um, fishing and... Uh, where is, here we go. Okay, so I, I believe this is Wheeler Lake. I could be also just making a fool of myself. Uh, labels, places, Wheeler Lake. Come on now, where are we? This is Decatur Flats. This has to be Wheeler Lake, right? Oh no, okay. Well, let me pull up Google. Let me pull up Navionics really quick and see. This is what happens when you do self live, guys. You either can be really dumb. If I'm over here and I'm not on Wheeler Lake, you guys are going to be just having a heyday over there. I know it. Not cut me any slack over here. Is this Wheeler? Wheeler? Come on. Alabama? Wheeler Lake. Yes. I did it. We did it, guys. I'm not an idiot. That's good. Okay. Uh, 
Good deal. Okay, so we were like, uh, so basically one one thing, uh, I'm not going to go through all the water level and stuff like that. Randy's kind of over here recently, so uh, water can fluctuate. We all know that. I'm just going to kind of skip, skip through that. I would be looking at water level and all that stuff. Big thing I'd be looking for on Wheeler Lake if I was going out there, the fish are already getting offshore, guys, on these lakes. Uh, on Wheeler Lake, they're already getting offshore. I know that's a lot of guys were catching them over there at that tournament um, that Randy was fishing. And for me, when those fish start getting offshore really heavy, that is prime time to start trying to find some fish pulling up on offshore ledges, offshore areas like that. Now, I'm not going to be looking for these offshore areas that are out here on the main, main channel. Instead, I want to be looking for these offshore areas that are close to the spawning areas, but not quite right on them. Now, if we take a look, uh, Wheeler Lake has some weird stuff going on because there's a lot of grass in it sometimes. Sometimes there's not. Uh, used to be very, very good. The Decatur Flats, then it got too much fishing pressure. I don't know the state of Wheeler Lake right now. It could be really good. It could be really not good. Um, but we're going to try to see if we can find some images back in time of the old Decatur Flats here. Um, doesn't look like we're... This looks very not promising. Okay, well, it looked like there was like a little... Or a decent image right here. But anyways, so if I was going to Wheeler Lake, big thing I would be focused on, guys... I would want to find some offshore ledges that are connected to some of the main creeks on this lake. A lot of the bass on Wheeler are going to move into these creeks to spawn. Some of them are not. But if those fish did move into some of these creeks to spawn, they're going to be moving out of these creeks and setting up on some of these first offshore drops and offshore areas. So for me, um, I would be kind of going up this lake and I would kind of maybe focus on like this zone right here if I was going there. Um, mid lake section if you get too far up this lake you get where it's like gets really narrow and these flats are just like kind of real shallow and there's probably a bunch of fish out here if you took the time to find them but it would just take too long to just scour all these really flat areas so I'm gonna try to find some areas that are a little bit closer to the mouth of creeks for example right in here so if you take a look here's a really nice creek uh, pocket where these fish could spawn and if I was going to try to start finding some fish out here on Wheeler this would be kind of my first stop to check out. I would basically pull up on a main river bar, a main river ledge right here, and try to find shells on top of that ledge. And I'd be trying to find either a shad spawn going on or try to find some schools of fish that have just pulled off offshore in these like in-between intermediate ledges. So like on the point right here, the point right here, that's where I would be checking out. That's where that tournament got won. Um, on the Pickwick tournament, like last weekend, that Randy was in, and I called it before the stream. I called it on the stream uh, the week before the tournament. Uh, I think I called it at least that uh, that's how it was going to be won. You guys can check the tape. I'm not 100%. But anyways, um, so that is where I was fish. That's where I would check out. I would also be heading out, you know, again, pockets where these fish could spawn. I would be looking at these main river bars out here, out in front of these smaller pockets, these like areas here. All these main river bars this is more of a summertime area, but those fish that first pull off, they can pull out on stuff like this. There might be some grass up there, so you may have to throw a chatter bait, you know, a big spinner bait. But I'd be looking for holes in the grass where there's shells, shell beds, up on top of these bars. And you can find that sometimes with your electronics, side imaging, stuff like that. Talk about that in my advanced electronics seminar uh, a little bit. Um, and then if you guys want to check that out, I do that every like two, three months. And then... I would also just kind of be looking for areas where that current is hitting in pretty hard to these points. This current right here is running really hard from uh, right to left down this river and maybe right where it hits here and kind of folds over the top of this little um, ditch that cuts in here. There might be some shells that pile up here, pile up right here. And if there's some shells here or here and then there's a hole in the grass, the shab will spawn there and it's just going to be absolutely game on. Bass just spawned in here, they move out, and they just get their feed bag on right there. So that's like a perfect little area for me on a Wheeler Lake and absolutely textbook. So that's what I'd be doing. I would just do that all over the lake. There's a bunch of spots I'm sure you could find like that in the mouths of all these pockets and coves. Um, here and here and here and here. There's, they're everywhere. So you guys get the picture, hopefully. And if you don't, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so that is that. Uh, I want to kind of speed us up here just a little bit because I got one more lake to look at. That was a quick one. Uh, but I got one more lake here, Lake Lanier, uh, going deep, clear, spotted bass. So that is a good um, change. So we have kind of a two average lakes. We have a Tennessee River, like our average water visibility is kind of stained. We have a, a lake 
Tennessee River with some grass. We had an offshore natural lake. Now we have Lake Lanier. So let's pull Lake Lanier up over here. Uh, let's see here, Lake Martin. I don't know my lakes again. Uh, Sinclair. No, it's over here somewhere. That's Hartwell. This is Lanier. There we go. Got Lake Lanier pulled up. So let me pull up in Lanier, and then we're gonna pull this up over here. In Google Earth. Just bear with me for half a second, guys. Uh, okay, Lake Sydney, Sydney Lanier. Perfect. Okay, so got pulled up on Google Earth and on Navionics. So. Really quick before we do that, uh, again, got to pay the bills. Uh, way we do that is, oh, one second here. You're gonna lose all of me at once if I do that. Way we pay the bills around here, as you guys know, fishthemoment.com. You're probably like, come on. Okay, we're back. Okay, lost lost the audio. Perfect. Okay, uh, I muted myself. This is I just got a new computer. Let me pull up my face again. I, I've done that twice in a row now, guys. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just I'm just muting myself like crazy. Okay, let me let me pull myself back up over here. We'll restart all that. Okay, I'm back. Hello. I, I'm I don't even have my logo up. There we go. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, guys. I, I am a, I am a hot mess without Randy here trying to do this all myself. I got my team calling me. They're like, "No sound. What's going on? We are here. We are going to be doing Lake Lanier in a second. Going back uh, to, to my shameless plugs. I was saying a bunch of really great stuff. You guys weren't hearing me. You couldn't even see my face. Someone said in the last live stream, I, uh, I messed up the audio again. Uh, and it, I was just talking for like two minutes live stream. And he was like, "Man, if you just go in." And like put some rap music behind Johnny. It sounds like he's just like dropping some sick beats. So like, I just be talk, you know, talking. It looks like I'm rapping like really intense. I don't know. That that's that's not. I thought it was funny. I don't know. Anyways, so back to uh, <laughs> oh god, back to what I was doing here. Oh, it's a nightmare. Okay, so let me pull this back up. So hopefully you can still hear me. Okay, uh, fishthemoment.com. If you guys want to help support the channel, guys, um, again I spend. 40 hours a week producing one free YouTube video. And that's all I do basically every week is make a one YouTube video, spend like my whole week doing that, making sure it's as top notch as possible. Then I do some stuff over here on fishmoment.com uh, to kind of help support the free YouTube content. So if you guys want to support the channel, just head to the website fishmoment.com, head to our virtual seminars page. First upcoming virtual seminar here, guys, is um, the seasonal bass movement seminar. And if we. Uh, Sorry, I want to make sure the audio is good. Uh, seasonal Bass Movement Seminar. I'll be talking about how bass migrate through the creeks, through different parts of the lake based on water temperature, water clarity, fluctuations um, in the thermocline, how bait fish movement changes bass behavior, how to track bass basically throughout an entire year, and make sure that you're fishing the right sections of the creek, the right areas of the lake to catch fish consistently. I've done the seminar once before, super popular. It filled up like a week before the seminar. So definitely make sure you sign up now if you want to get a spot in the seminar. There's only 30 spots available, small group, just so you guys don't have to worry about everyone and your brother knowing about it. And then uh, if we go to, um, you see this, it's May 13th. And this seminar is just for man-made lakes with shad and herring. It's just the easiest way to do it. There's 
too much specific information for all the different types of lakes, so I'm gonna focus on just that. There's plenty of info, promise you, just for that. It's one of the most detailed seminars, and I spent a ton of time putting this one together. I think I spent like 25 to 30 hours just making the slides for this seminar, so definitely check it out. And also check out our advanced summer uh, jig fishing seminar. Randy and I will be talking about our best offshore and shallow jig techniques. That one's coming up May 27th. I'll talk about more about that later. I want to get back to the breakdown. But real quick too, if you guys do want a personal breakdown or another breakdown for your lake, if you didn't uh, get yours broken down today, check out our lake breakdowns. You get 40 GPS waypoints, detailed area descriptions, including what are the ideal conditions to fish each area, season, water temperature, water clarity, water level, all that stuff. You can transfer them straight to your fish finder. And we got them for spring, summer, fall, we have our new summer breakdowns here if you guys are interested. So um, that's that. Okay, back to it. I'm not going to mute myself again. I don't know what's going on with me and muting myself and not being able to see you guys. This is, this is a nightmare. Once Randy gets back, it's going to be so much better. I'll be able to take my time with everything. He can kind of uh, fill in the gaps. So uh, if we take a look here at Lake Lanier, um, let me get all this out of here. Lake Lanier. Uh, so Lake Lanier is a deep, clear lake with big spotted bass. So the lakes we talked about so far have basically been all largemouth lakes. Haven't talked about a smallmouth fishery. Apologize for that. Um, just didn't come up. Uh, but basically, if we have Lake Lanier here, it's very, very clear most of the year. 8 to 10 foot of visibility. Very clear. Also has blueback herring in it. Blueback herring are a completely different animal, guys, to regular gizzard shad or threadfin shad. Herring are basically are like the filet mignon of shad. It's kind of like if you had the option to walk two extra blocks to be able to eat a filet mignon or you have a Big Mac from McDonald's right in front of you, which one would you choose? For most guys, you would walk the extra two blocks to eat the filet mignon. Some guys would just eat the burger. I mean, I'm not going to judge. I'm just saying. So basically for the bass, most of the bass are going to pass up an easy meal of gizzard shad or threadfin shad to go eat a blueback herring. That's just the way it is. So... With these lakes, you're really going to be looking for those places where the herring are. And in the post-spawn, when you have water temperature 65 to 70 degrees, the big deal is you want to find where those herring are spawning. The herring spawn is by far the only and best deal that you're going to get on. Now, the thing about a lake like Lanier is that the herring spawn is going to happen at different times based on the water visibility. So we take a look up the river here. Some parts of the river up here, you're going to have... Um, you know, six inches to a foot of visibility. That's where Jacob Wheeler won a Forcewood Cup a while back. I don't know, it was one of these river arms way up here um, in dirty water. And then down by the dam, you have 10 foot of visibility. And everywhere in between, you have different water visibilities. And what you'll find is that the herring are going to start spawning up in the shallow, muddier water first. And then the spawn will kind of trickle down to the dam. So it'll start up here and then it'll start kind of happening as you work your way down the dam over time. So it might start here in April and it might finish up here in middle of May. Now what you'll find is that if you can get on where that herring spawn is, you're going to get around a lot of bass. And those herring will basically pull up every morning, first hour of the morning, and start spawning on shallow water areas off the main lake. And then those bass will kind of hang out in those same areas later in the day. You can catch them on finesse baits, a shaky head, things like that. And in the morning, you can catch them on top water or like a fluke, stuff like that. So if I was going to be on Lanier trying to catch some of these uh, big spotted bass on the herring spawn, what um, you're going to be going to is basically, and I'm not bashing the burger eaters. I like a burger too. Sometimes you just want to be lazy, but you know, sometimes you want to have a, you know, some, just a little, treat yourself something a little bit better. Um, so if we go in here uh, to... Lanier, really what I'm looking for on a lake like this is I want to find some areas or some spots where the lake, it, where basically you have shallow water sticking out in front of a shallow pocket. That's kind of a theme you may have seen from all these lakes we're talking about. You have shallow pockets where these bass can spawn, like up in here, and then you have shallower areas, shallow long extending points off islands, things like this, that the shad can pull up on and spawn. This tip of this island right here is like absolutely perfect. It extends out. There's actually a little marker buoy for it to be too shallow. If the bass spawn in here, those herring can come off the main river or the main uh, creek channel, move in here and spawn up on top of this point right here. It's really flat, maybe two, three, four feet up on top. You can fire your top water over that in the morning. And if those herring are up, they're 
going crazy, you just go catch them right there. Now, as the day progresses, those herring will stop spawning. Those bass will still be in the area, but they might slide off and set up on a little rocky spot or maybe in a brush pile or a cane pile or something a little bit further off the drop here in 8 to 12 foot of water. That's when you can pick up a bait like a shaky head, a drop shot, drag it around really slow, Ned rig, stuff like that drag it off the tip of these points a little bit deeper and you can get those fish maybe pick up a fish every hour and a half you're not going to like crush them doing it because those fish can be super lethargic but if you can bring a really finesse bait by those fish when they've pulled off of this point out here you can get a bite every hour and a half if you can crush them in the morning get two three four really good fish in the morning maybe four good fish in the morning then fill out your limit the rest of the day that's kind of how you want to do it now, you're not just going to want to fish one of these points because they might not pull up and spawn on this point every morning. Instead, you want to have a bunch of them. So you might want to have another, there's a shallow ridge right here, have this uh, spot. You have another shallow point here. You have another shallow ridge right here, another point off this island, another point off this area here, another long shallow ridge right here, another shallow point. There's a bunch of them. And so you want to kind of just run these areas first hour of the morning and just bounce around and hit as many of them as possible where you have long spots that stick out from the lake closer to deeper water now i would just be running a ton of them and then later in the afternoon once that kind of dies down i'll be taking my electronics graphing around these areas trying to find some fish that are a little bit more grouped up maybe they're positioned a little bit deeper throwing that finesse bait and you can absolutely get on them so that's what i'd be doing on lake lanier um, other things you can do as well obviously you can run shallow pockets for brim bed bass or fry garters throwing a buzz bait up shallow you can skip shallow boat docks there's always a million ways to catch them that's just how i would be fishing because i like the shad spawn and i like kind of doing the offshore deal so that is kind of how i would break down the lake lanier guys and that's kind of how we break down all these lakes. That's um, That was the deal. So um, that is what we have for tonight, guys. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the... Um hopefully you enjoyed the live stream we had some audio issues we had a bunch of stuff going on and one thing i want to call out is that for those of you who are regular viewers every week i'm not going to be doing a live stream next week uh, i'm going to be um, doing smart things so i'm not going to be able to make the live stream next week so it's actually going to be two weeks from now when we do another one of these on fish moment live i'm going to be still posting a youtube video this week no youtube video next week either so next week kind of taking a little bit of a break no live stream no video but hopefully you guys will be able to still check out some of the contents, um, watch some of my old live streams, old videos. There's plenty of content out there, so uh, maybe a good time to just catch up on some of my old videos. If you do like these leg breakdown formats, guys, you can go on to the Fish the Moment YouTube channel, and you can just look up all my old live streams. I think I, have, I took off some of them, but I have like all of my old ones from like number one through like number 30 or something. All of them are lake breakdowns in this format where you can just watch me break down lakes, go lake after lake. My brim of my hat's a little bit flatter. Uh, I look a little bit younger, but uh, the information is still just as good. Uh, so definitely go check those out if you guys want more info there. And uh, again, remember to sign up for some of the uh, stuff over on fishmoment.com if you're interested. And Randy will be back here in a couple weeks. We'll break down all of his tournaments. He had uh, Terminal Lake Dardanelle come up this weekend. He had a tournament over on uh, Pickwick Lake. So we're going to basically spend the entire live stream breaking down his two tournaments, talking about what he did right, what he did wrong, all that stuff. So definitely check that out here in a couple weeks. So again, thanks for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you guys on the next stream in two weeks. Have a great night.